man, from from the beginning of my incarceration, I have I have worked hard to to make amends in in all the areas of my life that I need to make amends, and uh, by getting involved in all the programs that I needed to rehabilitate myself and be a better person. And uh, if given the opportunity to make parole today, I plan to continue to be the, the best person I can be. Welcome to Get Your Life, where every crime has a story. Life with the possibility of parole. All right, thank you. Uh, and we have our first case in front of us this morning. Sir, would you introduce yourself? Tell us your name and your POC number. Yes, ma'am. Jaime Maduro, 459-556. Right, Mr. Maduro. Uh, you heard the introduction. Good morning. Keith Nordyke appearing on behalf of Jaime Maduro. And in accordance with my normal procedure, I'm not filing a brief in the parole after signature cases. Thank you, Mr. Nordyke. Uh, we also have here who is, will be speaking in support. We have Mr. Kerry Myers with the Parole Project. Uh, Myrna Rivera, your mother, who will be speaking. Also with uh, your mother is Jan Maduro, your brother, who will be speaking. Also your father, who is there in support. He will not be speaking. And uh, then we also have your sister who's joined us, Camille. Uh, here in opposition uh, by Zoom, we have a representative from the DA's office in East Baton Rouge. She'll be speaking at the appropriate time. We also have Ms. Patrice Moore. Um, here with us in Baton Rouge, we have Derek Douglas, Annette Thomas, and uh, Nicole Hunter. Uh, all have indicated they'd like to speak. And so at the appropriate time, we'll call on those folks who uh, have indicated they'd like to speak today. You're familiar with the process, Mr. Maduro, because you had a clemency hearing uh, <clears throat> and received a favorable recommendation. The process is similar. So I'll read some identifying information into the record and then get started with the interview process. Yes, ma'am. So you are Jaime Maduro, your DOC number is 459-556. You're classified as a first felony offender. Uh, you have a conviction for second degree murder in East Baton Rouge. You received a life sentence. However, that sentence was commuted May, in May of this year, 2022, to 99 years with parole eligibility after having served 23 years. Your uh, parole eligibility date under Act 122022. You have an uh, You have a conviction for second degree murder in East Baton Rouge. You received a life sentence. However, that sentence was commuted May in May of this year, 2022, to 99 years with parole eligibility after having served 23 years. Your uh, parole eligibility date under Act 122 was determined to be September 20th, 2022. You have an adjusted good time, well, a good time date, excuse me, is January 4th, 2085. Your full term date, November 10th, 2099. Is that information correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, we also have... Uh, here, Jamel Hala. Is that, did I pronounce that correct? Jala. Jala, excuse me. Jamel Jala, who is also here in opposition. So, as mentioned, uh, your, your case was assigned to me, so I'll take the lead on the interview process. Okay, Mr. Maduro? Yes, ma'am. So, <clears throat> since your uh, clemency hearing, has anything changed? Have no, you participated in any additional programming opportunities? No, ma'am. I'm still uh, staying at the governor's mansion. So I'm, so I'm still I'm, had no disciplinary issues either. No, ma'am. Um, why do you think we ought to vote favorably for you today? Well, ma'am, from from the beginning of my incarceration, I have I have worked hard to to make amends 
in in all the areas of my life that I need to make amends. And uh, by getting involved in all the programs that I needed to rehabilitate myself and be a better person. And uh, if given the opportunity to make parole today, I plan to continue to be the, the best person I can be. Give us an example. You say you try to make amends in all areas of your life. Give us an example. So from, from the beginning of my incarceration, I, I began to work with myself to say, well, I need to make amends in the areas that I need to, to change. And uh, by getting involved in the programs, I needed anger management. I needed substance abuse. I needed to get, uh, to get education through the, through the seminary where I earned an associate's and a bachelor's degree. I needed to get involved in, uh, with the Hispanic communities since my, my first language is uh, Spanish. I got involved as a Spanish interpreter and helping the community. And, and, but before I was able to help others, I had to help myself. I had to, to make amends for, for the wrong that I, that I did and for, for the crime that I committed. I need to make a change from that because that is not the person that I that I was. I don't want to be defined by that by that person, by that act, and by the crime that I committed. I know I'm I'm different. I know I'm I'm better than this. I know I can be better. And I and I took all the the necessary steps that I needed to make to to be a better person. Um, as I was expressed to you during your clemency hearing, there is opposition uh, from law enforcement and others. Uh, we'll hear from the VA's office uh, a little later. Uh, and, and there's really not a whole lot you can do about that. Um, tell us, if should you be successful today, what would be your transition plan? So um, the plan will be to go to the uh, parole project where I'll be able to go through their program, their transition program and then make the transition to uh, Puerto Rico, uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, where uh, through the interstate compact, where then uh, my family has been, uh, provided me with uh, residence and my brother with uh, uh, employment. In your, in your uh, uh, classes, when you were able to take advantage of, did you uh, ever have the opportunity to take a victim awareness class? Yes, ma'am. We took a uh, uh, victim's awareness class. Yes, ma'am. You had the opportunity to speak to your victim's family. What would you say? If I can, I would say I sincerely apologize for the pain and anguish my actions have caused. And I regret, I regret the day I got involved in drugs. And I regret even more so the pain I caused when I took uh, Troy's life. And I am forever sorry for that. Thank you. I think Mrs. Jackson has some questions. Ms. Medora, uh, I do recognize that you granted a clemency and you probably spoke more about yourself and about your circumstances at the clemency hearing than you're doing today. But I will tell you that there are a lot of broken hearts in this room and surrounding the same. Um, a lot of them. So could you explain to them how you came to commit this crime? What, what was it that was caused you to commit this kind of crime against someone that they love. Yes, ma'am, and, and that was an um, unfortunate situation. I, I mean, my intentions, my intentions were never to shoot Troy. I mean, the, we, when we got into a, a very heated argument, very heated, uh, and it, things became very, tense, the tensions were, were very high. I believe in my heart, he, he reached for his waistline. I instinctively pulled my gun, I shot him multiple times and I, I regret that immensely. My intentions were never to shoot Troy. Thank you. Um, Mr. Jackson, you have 
So in his work involving drug trafficking. So how did that come about? Yes, ma'am, and I and I made a, a terrible decision in, in getting involved in that. I met I I'm, met someone. Okay, you know it's a terrible decision. I want to know what led to your even being involved in that lifestyle. Right. And not long after I came from, from Puerto Rico and moved to Houston with my family, with my uncle, and then when I started working at the um at the place where my uncle used to work in, I met I met a, uh, someone there. I met an individual there where I used to work, and uh, he made he made basically made uh, he was involved in in uh, drug activity, and uh, he invited me you know to get involved, and I I made the foolish decision of getting involved in that. Maybe why, 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 why do you think you chose to do that? You were working, so why do you, what do you think? Cause you to make that decision, and I and I think maybe maybe the the money of, of thinking I could make I could make even more money by you know getting involved in that and not even knowing how how much you know trouble that was going to cause how much pain I was going to cause I not not even knowing how it was it was way over my head. How old were you? How old were you? I was uh, about twenty. 20 years old. How did you natural, right? I'm sorry, ma'am. How did you know Troy? I met uh, Troy through uh, my co-defendant, uh, Torres Heckles. Um, he was also, he was involved uh, in the in the drug activity and I met Troy through, uh, through Torres Heckles. What brought you to Baton Rouge then? So, what brought me back to Baton Rouge was that Troy had, uh, we had recruited Troy to, to move the drugs, and he uh, he failed to move some drugs, portion of the drugs, and moved to Louisiana. And the reason when I came to Louisiana was uh, to to deal with the drugs and get the drugs back. The uh, um, the one over the operation, the individual over the operation where the drugs belonged to, he was already uh, suspecting that I had something to do with Troy uh, stealing the drugs, and that was not the case. So I was already receiving uh, threats in that regard, and uh, I had to my my intentions when I came to see Troy were to uh, to get the drugs back from him. Uh, you, your co-defendant, and Troy were all involved in this hidden crime. I'm sorry, ma'am. You, your co-defendant, and Troy were all involved in this hidden crime. Mm -hmm. This drug activity was New York. Yes, ma'am. How long had you known Troy? I have known Troy for maybe maybe months. I would say maybe eight months, you know, prior to, to that. So you, you talked about you've done some things to try to make amends. Um, yes, ma'am. What, what do you think the most important thing you've done to try to make amends? I think the most important thing that I've done has been going through the seminary. Um, even I, with all the programming that I that I took and completed, uh, the seminary kind of brought everything together. Because when I came in, I went in there to seek more understanding and how I can better understand the situation. And and it gave me, on top of giving me an education and a degree, uh, it equipped me to to do to help others and get involved in in. Uh, in the community service and and be a part of the community, as particularly the Hispanic community, where I was able to serve them as a as a Spanish interpreter, and through that I was able to get involved in the in the uh, Point Lookout project that dealt with giving uh, fellow inmates a proper uh, bureau, where it kind of helped me understand even give more respect to to life and. Uh, 
Deangolite was another big uh, uh, big deal for me where I was able to learn to write in a journalistic way and be able to communicate with, uh, with people and be able to understand more of the situation and what I have done and, and how much of pain and anguish I have caused to, to my family, to the Taggart family, to the community as a whole. And so the seminary kind of brought that in for me where I was able to uh, understand and make mess in, in, in my life. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Maduro. That's all I have. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Freeman has questions. Mr. Maduro, uh, what kind of weight were y'all moving? It's like y'all were getting it out of Columbia? Yes, sir. So the way it was, it was moved, it was through the, through the body. So the person was actually swallowing a, a certain amount or uh, however amount they were able to swallow and then uh, being able to even fly from Colombia to, to the States. Okay, and um, have you started your interstate compact yet? Yes, sir. I, I just submitted the, uh, uh, the application and stuff this week. Thank you. All right, thank you. Lieutenant, can you tell us anything about Mr. Maduro? Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you all for the opportunity to speak this morning. Um, I, I know any, nothing about who Jaime was when he got incarcerated. All I can tell you about is the man sitting next to me, and he's a joy to be around. Um, he and I have had lots of conversations traveling back and forth to the mansion, talking about his family and how important they are to him. And I just know that when he comes here, everybody's like, oh, Jaime's here. Let's go say hi. You know, let's go see my boy. And his present job at the mansion is one that you know, requires a, a great deal of trust. Um, and he's loved by everyone he works with. They enjoy his presence. And I know he's looking forward to being able to not only be back out in society, but to be back with his family and to just to show them who he is now, not who he was, but the man that he's become. All right, thank you. Uh, We'll hear, we'd like to hear from the parole project team. Mr. Myers? Yes, good morning. Kerry Myers, Louisiana Parole Project. I think three things stand out here with Mr. Maduro, and it's trust, sincerity, and remorse. Uh, trust, because he's been trusted in multiple, multiple uh, areas and multiple layers uh, since his incarceration. As a Class A trustee, uh, he's had zero disciplinary reports in his 22 years. Uh, his trust as an interpreter for both legal programs uh, and, and the uh, medical uh, staff at Angola. Uh, his trust as a, as a club leader. They needed someone to step forward uh, to, to help the Hispanic community. Uh, they tapped Mr. Maduro to, to do that. Uh, trust as, as someone who went into the state police trustee program and now works at the governor's mansion. At every level, uh, Mr. Mazur, Mr. Maduro has exhibited trust. Uh, his sincerity is very clear today. Uh, who you see, uh, what you see is, is, is the person he is. And his remorse, I can tell you that uh, in his, uh, when he became editor of the Angolite, it was because I needed someone that I could trust uh, to succeed me as editor of the Angolite. And I personally asked Mr. Maduro to take that position because I knew he understood the, the mission. He understood that it was the person, its mission. And I trusted to take care of that. So in every aspect, uh, I also know personally Mr. Maduro's remorse uh, and have listened to many times his, uh, his sincere remorse over, over his own actions. He, I believe that he thought that he could make money and not get his hands dirty. And I know now that he knows after the many conversations with him that there was an, nothing clean about what he was doing. And he has done everything in his since then to try to be the person he knew he should be. And so I would ask this board that Pearl Project will provide him with the support, transitional support he needs. Uh, it is 22 years is, is coming back into a world he's not gonna recognize. Uh, we will provide him with that transitional support. Uh, and there, he's going to go to his very loving and caring family 
uh, in Puerto Rico where he has uh, employment, where he has housing, and he has, has a, a tremendous support system. So I'd ask this board to grant Mr. Maduro his parole today. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Um, we'd like to hear from Ms. Rivera. Your microphone is on, on mute. There you. Good morning. My name is Myrna Rivera, and I am Jaime's mother. And we are today here before you to ask mercy for our son so he can come back home to Puerto Rico. But first, we want to express once again that it has never been our intention to underestimate the victim's family sorrows while we ask for parole for our son. There is no present or future circumstance in our lives that will ever make those past events disappear from our lives. As a former district attorney, I understand the responsibilities of complying with all the parole conditions. And I can assure you that I will help him stay on track. Also, all of us in our family will continue to give him all the support he needs to rebuild a new life out of prison. He will be living with us at our home where he has his own bedroom. He's going to have a job and he will go to our church with all of us. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And uh, can we hear from uh, Mr. Jan Maduro? Yes, um, I'm Jan Maduro. I am Jaime's youngest brother. I have a boutique firm that focuses on disaster recovery and grant management. I have been a consultant for more than 10 years now. Um, should he be allowed on parole, uh, Jaime will be hired immediately with us to assist in daily activities related to management and maintenance of the office space that we're operating on right now. He will be working <clears throat> under my supervision directly, and I will coordinate with my parents to track and update uh, the progress that he's had uh, throughout. And I firmly believe that the programs I may participated in, uh, the education and mentoring that he partook on were instrumental in his reform for the past 20 years. And I think that that in addition will allow him to perform the duties that we're expecting of him at our office. Thank you. Now we'll hear from the opposition, um, and we have we'll hear from those who are here with us in the room first. Um, so I'll uh, ask for Annette, Ms. Tom, could you uh, step up to the podium now? And we did receive uh, all of the letters in the record and had time to review them. Thank you so much for submission, submitting that. Um, do you want this? It's difficult right now because we went through this extension. And a couple months ago, not a couple months ago, I'm doing it again. I know we hear all the good things that he has done. We hear what his family is going to do. But my brother can't come back here and live his life. I say he's going to live his life. He can't do that. He can't redo his life. But y'all giving him the opportunity to do his life, I just don't agree with that. And he said that he did not come here to shoot him. You know, when you shoot somebody, you shoot him one time and you get his gun. He shot him several times. So we done that several times. You had time to stop. So my thing is, you meant to kill him out of anger. Who knows? He's not going to go to Puerto Rico and do the same thing. We don't know that. He said his anger had changed. Of course, if I'm locked up, and I didn't have anything to do. Yeah, I would go to church. I would get my degree. I would do all that because I don't have the opportunity to do it because I don't have nothing else. But if he's out here public with us, would he have changed his life? Would he have stopped selling drugs? We don't know that. But you have the opportunity to change your life. 
And so I don't um, agree because right now, when I go visit my brother, okay, he can go back to Puerto Rico, he can visit his mom, he can visit his mom. My mom can't do that. She can't go visit her son like his mom is gonna do. You know, we have to go on plane clothes to the Winfield funeral to the great to visit our brother. Yeah, my brother came home, and the reason he came home was to take care of his elderly grandmother. And if my grandmother was in that house at the time, I believe Jamie would have killed her as well. He didn't want to see the evidence that he had did what he did. So if you had remorse, if you had any remorse, you would have contacted the family. He has never contacted us. He has never written a letter. He has never said anything that he's sorry. You can say you're sorry now because you want you want that freedom. You want to be granted that parole. You can say you're sorry now, but you don't feel the ache that we feel every morning when I get up. I guess it's 20 some years, but you still feel that hurt. I still feel that hurt every day. Now my niece and daughter, and he's married. You don't think he's gonna feel that hurt when he's not there to walk her down the aisle? You think she's not gonna feel that hurt? My mom. They is suffering, and we cannot tell her what's going on because I'm thinking that's going to hurt more, make her more sick than what she did, what she is. So, like I say, Danny can sit there and say he did this, he did that, he did that. His family can say that they can take care of him. That's good to know. Why? Well, where was y'all 20 years ago when y'all come to Texas? Why y'all didn't keep him in, in Columbia or wherever he was? You'd have kept him there. My brother was still alive. Well, what, what was you then when you needed your help? And you didn't worry about him then, but now you want to see him. You want to see him. You want to see, see him get out. I don't think he should get out. When we had that clemency, they said he's supposed to spend 23 years before he's going to parole. It ain't had to be 23 years. It has not. It's only been 22. And like I said, when you're in jail and when you're incarcerated, you're going to do everything you can to get out. And that's what I believe he's doing. He has done. They claim he's a good person. Hell, you didn't know who he was back then. I'll be good too to get out. Yes, ma'am. You know, like can I say, you wrap it up for us so we can hear from your siblings? Can you wrap it up for us so okay, we can I'm also sorry. hear from I'm your siblings? And I don't think I don't think he's ready to get out. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Miss Nicole. Okay. And so I am Troy's younger sister. Um, so I think it's greater than we can have to relive this day to make 2000. And then here today, I was. Senior in high school, sneak in, pension class, pulled out of the office, and was told what happened. Um, today is my mom's 75th birthday. This is not how I want to start today at all. Um, bottom line is, he's on earth. He's quite blank here. That's it. He changed many lives. I don't know He's changed the trajectory of several lives. Not including, like I said, I'm senior in high school, getting ready to graduate. The DA said it would be best to not travel out to go to college. I stayed in Louisiana because at that time, we had no idea who the murderer was or if it was a collective of murders, yeah. um, like she said, his kids are suffering. His family, his siblings, his friends, they're all still suffering. And of course, you know, it's great that he has a, a support system. Troy would have a support system if he was here. Again, Nothing is guaranteed because if it was, we could not be here today. He was sentenced to life. 
and that should have been it. Mm. However, we are here defending my brother who is not able to defend himself because of something that was put in place by the justice system and they're not holding up to it. So now we have to sit here and represent him. I just want you all to take that into consideration. I understand what he has done. I just know someone who's trying to regain their life back out into the public is going to do whatever they need to do. And I hope that he sincerely done everything that he did to change his life. And when he gets out, I hope that he continues, but he can prove all of these people. Right. Yes, Thank you. Mr. Douglas. Uh, Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Gary Douglas, as well as my big brother. Uh, my sister said it earlier. Today is my mom's birthday today. 75 years old. So, this is another day that we got to bring it up again. September 8th is the day. Christmas, birthday. Not my mom's birthday. We got to live this again. You know, what do you do? You know, everybody's talking about how well Jamie did. We got a great guy here. Today, I can't tell. I can't tell. I, I, I see it. I see a guy. Back against the wall, trying to do whatever it takes to get out. You know, it's mine, it's brother, and family. Got all these things set up for him. That's great. <clears throat> you know what I did Sunday? Sunday, I went, out, went to my mom's house, cut her grass. And uh, I left there and went immediately around my brother's grave. That's what I did. And uh, that's all I got. That's the closest I can do for him. That's the best I can do for him at this point. And all these love for me and my family, that's the best I can do. And, uh, you know, I don't believe in death penalty. I don't believe in none of that. But I believe if you take a life, you should give up your life, your freedom, the whole night. You know, I work, I pay taxes, I, 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 I support the, the detectives, the, the, the police department. They did their job. Everybody did their job. They convicted him of murder. See you later. You shouldn't have to be dealing with this 22 years later. You were a killer, you were a murderer, you messed our family up so bad. And it's ridiculous that we're here today, 22 years later, dealing with it. Just don't make sense to me. And, um, you know, and I know everybody's pushing this, you know, this reform stuff. Okay, I get it. You know, I'll be with that if my brother could get reformed too, you know, but he can't. So the day my brother get reformed and, and get about that ground and do what he got to do to become a better person, then we let Jamie out and let him be a better person too. But until then, I feel he should, he should stay there. You know, it just... You know, it's selfish act. You know, we come all the way from Houston, Texas. First, you was a recruiter. You recruited my brother to sell drugs, to push drugs, move drugs. You know? And you come all the way from Houston, Texas. Like, I mean, you're a drug dealer. And my, yeah, my brother was in, involved with drugs, too. But it's not like I had a, it's not like y'all, you know, had a, a neighborly spat over, hey, where's my dog? You know, we just go down here and just talk about my dog in your yard. This, this, these are drug dealers. No one's coming to talk to you about some missing drugs. They're coming to kill or do harm in some way. This, this is not a, a friendly conversation about, about drugs. Mr. Douglas, can you wrap it up for us, sir? Yes, but but you know, um, like I said, I, I, I think this, this is a bad situation for our whole entire family. This is all this is bad memories bringing up, um, being brought back up, and I just I just wish the board would deny it because it's, it's not right to all of us. Thank you. <coughs> so. um, we'll hear from the DA's office. Ms. Barbera. 
Thank you, Chairman Renato. Obviously, what y'all have seen this morning is a family that for the past 22 years has dealt with the fact that their loved one is gone. But the family has gone from the belief that they received the closure that Mr. Maduro would spend the rest of his life in prison to a clemency hearing in January with a commutation in May. And just three short months later, they're facing a parole hearing where his potential release is imminent. And that, I think the board does understand how that is a struggle. Um, I think Mr. Nordyke understands, Mr. Myers, it is a, a, a very difficult thing for this family to deal with. Um, as the record shows, we tried this case. Mr. D'Amico afforded Mr. Maduro excellent representation, as I mentioned at his clemency hearing. And I do not recall if there was any plea negotiation in this matter. Um, what I do know is that approaching 22, 23 years in prison, he has served less time than if we had entered into a plea agreement for the, a term of 40 years pursuant to a manslaughter conviction. If he were to serve 85% of a 40 year sentence, he would still have 34 years to serve. And due to the nature of this homicide, all of the surrounding facts and, facts and circumstances, uh, we just humbly submit to this board that this amount of time is not sufficient uh, for Mr. Maduro. We cannot change the past. We cannot bring Mr. Thaggart back. Um, I do recognize that Mr. Maduro has done some excellent things while incarcerated. Um, he has done what we wish all inmates would do. However, we just don't believe that it's time for his release just yet. Um, as I mentioned last week in a hearing, just please give this family a little more time to deal with the fact that he will one day uh, be walking the streets um, either here or in San Juan. And we respectfully request that his parole be denied today. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Barbera. So uh, at this time, we'd ask, before we turn it over to Mr. Nordyke, we'd ask uh, Mr. Maduro, is there a statement you'd like to make to the uh, parole panel? Yes, ma'am. I would like to say that I am forever sorry for the crime that I committed. There's not a day that I do not think about what I did that night. And I have done everything I can to be a, a better person and make better choices and better decisions. And if granted the opportunity to be released today, I hope to be an example to those behind me. And I hope to, uh, to someone too in Puerto Rico with whom I could share my story of redemption. Thank you for your time. Sorry, thank you. Mr. Nordai. Thank you. I have several thoughts on this that I would like to, to share. Um, first, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, with regard to Ms. Barbera's comment on, on uh, if the manslaughter plea had been operative, I think we'd be in exactly in the same place because I think Act 122 would have us at a parole hearing right now anyway. Uh, with the amount of time served. So I'm not sure that makes a difference. But the second thing I want to mention is I made some notes at the clemency hearing, and I can't quite figure out to whom the note should be attributed because the note was between Ms. Jackson's comments and Mr. Roche's comments. But one of the two said, if not you, who? Meaning that the, the body of work that Jaime Maduro has, has put forward is his is probably as uh, prolific and as meaningful as, as anybody that has come before this panel in a long time. And I, I have to echo that. With, with regard to who this man is and what he has done, uh, being a trustee, being an Angolite editor, um, one thing Mr. Roche did say was that Kerry Myers would have never picked him if it were not for character. So he would not have been editor if not for character. He would not be at the mansion if not for character. So he has been a trustee for the great majority of his, his uh, incarceration, and he has had zero write-ups, which is an incredibly impressive thing. With all the programs uh, and the attempts to make amends that he has given, I would ask this board to parole him to the parole project and then to Puerto Rico. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Nordyke. All right, 
Mr. First, I'd like to say uh, I want to thank the um, members of the fact family for being here, for, for participating in the process, both at the clemency hearing and, and today. Uh, I know it is a uh, painful and traumatic experience for all of you and all the family. And I'm sorry today is the day you're doing this on your mother's birthday. I apologize for that schedule, but you know we're we're sitting here today and we're looking at Tommy Maduro and and we review in detail what happened in the crime. Our job is not to to retry the case and, and we accept that you know he did what he did. Our job is to look at who the man before us is today, um, and is there a risk that he would. Uh, Reoffend, in my opinion, and based on the, the scientific evidence we have, he's a very low risk. I do not believe he's a risk to public safety. Mm -hmm. He's done everything he could. To change, and I believe he has. So my vote today would be to break his parole. Mm -hmm. I would add to the interstate compact, first to the parole project and the interstate compact to uh, Puerto Rico, uh, which the only special conditions I would add is that you would have no contact with the victim's family and uh, stay away from Baton Rouge. Yeah. Um, first to the family, I'm not going to say you wouldn't feel, but, but I can see what you're going through and you know this is not easy. I will tell you that inmates are prohibited from reaching out to different things. As a violation of DOC rules, they can't do it. So don't take that to mean that he didn't want to. Sometimes I just think he's more pain than someone who is out to drink in prison because they don't usually know the right things to say. And so I just want you to know that. Uh, I know the belief is that everyone in prison works hard to get out. Boy, I wish that was true. I wish that were true, uh, but it's not. But it's not. There are people who had you know, 100 write-ups, people who have constantly been in and out of lockdown. There are people who sit in programs and get nothing out of them. So I don't want you to think that you know, everyone in prison does what Mr. Maduro has done. I wish that were true because our process, our system, and just the, the outcome for society would be a lot better. But what I also want to say to you is that this mature has no right to your forgiveness. He doesn't. But I will tell you that forgiveness is for him. It's for you. And I mean that to be safe for you. I am a person of faith, and I believe that no one is beyond reach. If they work like we're not in our force in the end. Ms. Maduro has worked hard and accomplished much. There's not anything else he can do to demonstrate that he's not a 20 something year old that he was when he took the love answer. None of us are who we were at 20. We've been speaking down for that. But when I look at what he's done, what he's accomplished, and the fact that I voted for climate city when it's happened, nothing has changed. And so my vote today, my one, would be to grant this call. To the weekend, the wall project, and then to um, the 
And I hope we're putting it in this today will be a the first step in you all being able to move forward. And that's easy. Mr. Freeman? The tough, tough case. I mean, 20, 22 years is not a whole lot, but 23 years is one year away. He has done what he's supposed to do while he's been in, in jail, but uh, still he took a life in the process. I do want to thank the victims for showing up. You know, I know it's got to be tough going to your brother's grave and taking care of it. I haven't lost a family member yet beside my parents, and I know that would be very, very tough. Uh, but I also am going to vote to grant conditional that he go to Puerto Rico after the 4 project, but he not return to the United States unless approved by the parole board. I don't want you going to Puerto Rico and then turning around and coming back here and taking up some old habits. So you remain out of here while you have home supervision to remain in Puerto Rico. All right, Mr. Maduro, so you've received a uh, favorable vote today, unanimous. The vote's been granted. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe.